Hi, welcome to Single Mom on a Farm. I'm Marcy. When people hear my children play the piano, they are amazed when I tell them that they've never had piano lessons before, and they ask me how I taught them to be self-taught pianists. So that's what I'm going to talk about today. My musical background is that I had one year of piano lessons, I think when I was about six, and then another year in high school sometime, I think it was like August to May. I can't even remember if it was that long. Um, I didn't like it, and I don't really remember, but I did teach myself how to play the hymns of our, for our church, and I played for our youth group, which is ages 12 to 18. So I learned to play the hymns on the piano, and then in college, I took an organ class for a year, and same thing, to want to learn to play the hymns on the organ. Then when my first baby was six months old, I was asked to play the piano for the children, ages three to 12, for them to sing like head, shoulders, knees, and toes, and their cute little Sunday school songs for about two hours every Sunday. So I did that. Kylie just sat on my lap and she would put her little hands on top of mine when I, while I played. She never banged on the piano. People would tell me that she had really long fingers and that she would make a great pianist. So I had high hopes for her to be a good pianist. I wanted a piano in our house, but in Texas, our house was only 700 square feet. There wasn't room for it or a good place for one. I knew it'd be too loud and I always had napping babies. I had four children in that house. So when we moved to our North Carolina house, there was a good spot for a piano, but the same problem, I didn't want a piano because it'd be too loud, but I did find a digital piano used for a couple hundred dollars that we were able to buy with our tax refund. And I was super happy about that. I let the kids just play around on it. We could put the volume way down so they could play while kids were napping. They loved to play the digital like preset songs on it. So it had like Yankee Doodle and some good classical songs. They would play songs and then like run around the house, which we had like the kind of the kitchen in the middle and they could like run through the living room and the foyer and everything. So that was really fun for them. It also had a cool feature where you could turn off the left hand or, or the right hand. They turned off the right hand and the left hand would play digitally. And so they could just learn how to play the notes for the right hand with it and they would just sound out notes. So they're always just playing on it and it was great. And I kind of forgot about the piano after that. And then in 2011, Christmas time, then the youth of our church were um, up on the stand singing some Christmas songs and a youth was accompanying them on the piano. And I think I said this every Christmas or any time I saw youth perform, I was like, oh, when Kylie's 12, she'll be the one playing the piano up there. And then all of a sudden I was like, wait a second, she's 11 now. Like she's gonna be 12 next September. I was like, where have this have the years gone? Why have I not taught her the piano yet? I cannot believe it. And it's kind of one of those mom fail moments. I felt so guilty, so bad. We'd had the piano for three years now and I hadn't taught them to play the piano. None of them could play any church songs at all. So I made a new year's resolution when I went home after church that day and decided starting in January, my children will learn to play the church songs. So I made them up a little chart for them to do and it become part of our homeschool curriculum. I took our children's songbook, which looks like this, except it had a blue cover on the front that's been torn off. And I just went through the songs starting at the beginning and I wrote down on this chart a list of songs. Like the first one is I'm a child of God. So I wrote that one and then like the next song and I skipped the really hard songs. I skipped like the Christmas songs because now it was not Christmas anymore. Um, I'd put in some spring songs, some of their favorites. I'd throw in a hard one every once in a while. Anyway, I made up this chart and wrote their names on it. So you have Kylie, Madeline, Spencer, Alexis, and Mommy. I was going to join in also just to be a good example, but that didn't really last very long. <laughs> I've never really had much time to play the piano. Um, but they had to practice. So the first week is I'm a Child of God. They had to practice it every day. And then on Fridays, they signed it off for us, kind of like a mini family recital. And then we'd have like a little snack or treat afterward. So... I would, if they didn't do it very good, then I wouldn't sign it off and they would have to repeat it the next week. But they did the song that I picked for them and then they were able to choose one of their own songs each week. So each week they're working on two songs. So we did that and that worked out pretty good. Um, and then they got pretty, I did this throughout the whole summer, actually from like January all the way till September when Kylie was turning 12. And they, they followed it and they all took off. So Kylie was 11 and Madeline was 10, then Spencer would have been eight and Alexis six when I started this. It was really fun to see their different personalities and music styles come out. Kylie was really careful. 
She played the songs really slowly and perfectly over and over until it was really good. And Spencer would just plow through a song and just play it and bang it and kind of and hit a lot of wrong notes, but thought he was really amazing. And Alexis really struggled with even just getting the right hand of the songs that I assigned and, and just had no coordination whatsoever. So I let her do it for a couple of months and then I just gave up and was like, either she is too small, too young, six years old, or she's just not coordinated. <laughs> I kind of thought she just wasn't coordinated. She was left-handed and she just struggled to do the right hand of songs. So I thought maybe she'll just be a singer or something else. Now she's an amazing pianist. So don't lose hope if you don't think your kid is coordinated. It might come later. What I found from this is these are the golden ages. It's from like 10 to 12 when kids just rock it and take off with their piano skills. Um, Kylie was able to start doing several songs in a week instead of just like the two songs I assigned. She was able to like go through the whole the whole list. By the summer, she was able to learn like four or five songs a week, start doing several songs a day. Um, and so the moral of the story is that when she turned 12 in September, she could play all the church songs hymns and she was able to play for her youth group, which I was really, really happy about and and relieved that it worked. And Madeline and Spencer were falling right behind her and almost at the same level <clears throat> because they were at those golden ages also. And all four of them now are just amazing pianists. They accompany for people professionally, like where they can get paid for it. Madeline has a gig this Christmas and she did it last Christmas where she plays the piano for a play and gets paid for it and they accompany musical numbers for all their friends. Anyway, so I do recommend this, or this is what, I'll just show it to you again really quick. So you just write a song. It's a simple table. Um, you can you can pick out songs if you want to row or row your boat and let them pick a song out so that they'll stay motivated. And then another song and they just, you can just sign off on it. And we just have two pages. I just did it, like I said, for um, about those eight or nine months. And then I ended up repeating it again when Alexis was, uh, 10 or 11 or 12, I realized, hey, wait, the next four kids need this program. And I did the same thing, printed off a little chart and stuck it on the wall by the piano. And they were, um, I don't think we did as good at the recitals, like in front of the family, <clears throat> but they just signed off when they did a song. And it pretty much says all they need is a few songs picked out for them and then a place to sign the date of when they finished it. And they were able to just take off with their, their music like that. Why I call ages 10 to 12 the golden years or the piano explosion stage is because I think they're playing less. Like naturally, they're just playing less dolls and Legos and dress up and doctor. They're not just so invested in all those little activities. They starting to get more bored. So I've noticed all of my 10 kids around those ages like to start to read more and gravitate towards the piano. Those are just their two big skills that, the, that they've all gone through a little stage. And so I try to capitalize on that. Like, hey, you're really interested in the piano right now. And just really encourage them, hey, you're doing great. Look how many songs you're learning this week. And as they teach themselves, and then maybe if you wanna do this chart or if you just wanna have them some books just laying around, they'll just go find them and start practicing or start sounding out songs by ear. Just kind of be a facilitator of helping, hey, do you need any help with this? But let them lead you and saying how much they want to learn and everything. But obviously you can teach them at any age. Tilly is only, when she was six, she started really wanting to learn the piano a lot. And um, now is seven and is going through the song super fast. I don't know if it's gonna keep on lasting or if it's gonna kind of you know slow down and she'll find a different thing to play with. Um, but the boys are nine and 10 right now and they're just doing the explosion phase. I'm gonna show you a few resources <clears throat> that, we've, that we have that you may want. Um, or just so you can see what they look like if you end up wanting to order them. When I started this program with the children, then someone gave us this book. It is 67 Fun Songs by John Schmidt. He's from The Piano Guys, which my kids love. And in it, they have lessons that you can go through and it tells the mother or the teacher what to say. So that is really helpful if you don't know any music, you don't have a musical background. It'll just ask the student, do you know what this thing is called? Do you know how it works? Um, and it has all the answers for it and some activities for them to do. So they have the student draw a dot and a few different lines and spaces on the empty staff above. So it has some activities and they kind of promise that you can go through it in a couple of weeks and have your student already know all the notes and be able to play songs with both hands. I tried it a little bit with Alexis, I think. Um, and I think it was good, but I kind of just tapered off. I'm just not a good, 
homeschooling parent to sit with my children at the piano and teach them piano lessons. <clears throat> like I don't just sit there and say, hey, we're gonna have a piano lesson today at 1030 and sit next to them and help them. But it's, I'm just always busy doing laundry and babies, <clears throat> diaper changes and stuff like that. But on their checklist, then they are, then they have their own assignments, <clears throat> sorry. And they just know, so, oh, I have my math, I have spelling, I have piano, whatever goals that they've made on their, their checklist. And so they will just go to the piano and then they will go do their math. They'll ask me for help. Mom, can you quiz me on my spelling words? And if they need help with the piano, they'll say, mom, can you help me with this song? Or if I hear something that they're always missing a note, then I can just come over and be like, hey, you're, you got your finger in the wrong spot. So that's how I help with the piano lessons is just listening in or if they call me over it, <clears throat> over to the piano. Otherwise, they're very self-motivated and that's what I wanted. You know, I already have to tell them so many times about cleaning the room, helping with the housework. I used to have them help with babies all the time. Can you hold this baby while I take a shower or whatever? Um, we have a lot of yard work and animal work and things I have to tell them what to do is like the top of the things I tell them. And then homeschooling is next. Um, but I still let them choose a lot of their own subjects. And then I teach a few subjects as a group so that they have to come for that. Um, and then the last thing is the piano or instruments <clears throat> or their own hobbies. Um, I don't just make them practice. And that's kind of a benefit of not having piano lessons because if I think I paid a teacher, then I would want to make them practice. And I just didn't want that to be a source of contention with me and them like, hey, I'm paying for these piano lessons, you better practice. I didn't want it to be like that for our relationship. I wanted it that they would want to play the piano. And gratefully, all 10 of them do want to play the piano and they all love it. So that has been a big blessing. And I wanted them to have that motivation to be good. <clears throat> anyway, so the, and then another books that I've never used, I don't even know where they came from, are Alfred's Basic Piano Library. But I'm just showing him so you know what they look like because they are probably a great source. I just had never used them. It looks like they have um, some easy way to teach a child and that they could probably learn from it themselves, especially if they're like at good reading ages, you know, like nine, 10, 11, I'm sure they could just teach themselves from these books. The ones that I have bought and that I do recommend are the ones that I grew up with seeing on my piano when I was a kid and playing through by myself. <clears throat> And that's teaching little fingers to play. It has a red cover, which is missing now, but um, I just love them because they're familiar with me, familiar to me, and it has just little lessons. Again, pretty easy. And when a child does it, then I put their initial at the top with the date next to it. It's kind of fun to see how fast they're progressing. Like a couple weeks ago. Um, Tilly did nine songs in one day like she just wanted to sit at the piano all day so I just went through and, and marked this is 9 16 24 on, on every page that she was just doing all these songs like good job look at you go through these songs and then other times there'll be like this big gap you know like a two-month gap when maybe we're um, camping and doing a lot of yard work or blueberry hill or whatever and we just don't get to the piano as much more of our outside months and that's okay too you know <clears throat> you don't have to just learn a song every week the whole year um, if the kids are just just wanting to fly through it and just have one of those moments of like, I want to learn the piano so much right now. That's where Tilly is right now. And it's super exciting to watch that she just gravitates to the piano all day. She just wants to, mom, teach me the next song. Let me help me with the next song. Or she tries it herself or asks another sibling to help her. And I love to see that. It's like when a baby's learning to walk. Sometimes you're like, get up and walk. And they just keep falling and crawling. And like, they just want to stay crawling. They won't learn to walk. And then all of a sudden one day they, they just take a few steps and they fall and they get back up and they take a few more steps and falling back up and like all of a sudden they, all they want to do is practice walking. They don't want to be held anymore. They don't want to crawl anymore. So that's when you just capitalize on it and take them somewhere where they can just walk all over the place and just practice until they're really good at it. So I try to grab those moments with my kids with whether it's juggling or um, origami or riding a bike, whatever it is. You know, I've had kids that just go outside and like they just will not stop practicing their bike. So grab those moments and if they're interested in music, then get them a book and try to help them learn um, as much as you can. Um, help them be encouraged to learn for themselves. Like you can figure it out. Um, let's see, I think that's all I wanted to say. 
it's just been so rewarding. I have a post on my blog about the benefits of them playing the piano. And mostly it's just these heartfelt moments when I see them all gathered on the piano, spontaneously playing and singing together. I just love that. That's just what I've always wanted for my family. One time there was a piano recital for little kids and my neighbor was giving it and she just called up and was like, can Spencer come play a song with me and do it? And he just showed up and played it perfectly, like never practicing it. He just can sight read amazing. And it's like, I loved that he got to participate in this little kid recital at, I don't know, he's probably 16 years old. Um, but that's great. Oops, I forgot to show these books. These are the rest of them. This is the Teaching Little Fingers to Play and it's got the red cover. This is like kind of like a kindergarten book. And then these ones are numbered like first, second, third, all the way up to fifth grade. I just got the whole set one time when Nathan had a really good job and I was already doing, starting that musical program that I was telling you about with picking the songs. And so I thought I'll just get this, the whole set because I'd had them when I was a kid. I don't think my kids have ever even done maybe the third, fourth, and fifth grade <laughs> books. Uh, but if you want to just try out one at a time, you should do that. They're pretty fun, I think. And I liked them when I was a kid. They have fun songs and they still have some good lessons. Easy to teach, easy for you to figure out how to teach them, and easy for children to teach themselves from um, with not a lot of um, extra work involved. If you're watching this, you're probably interested in teaching your children or helping them become great pianists. So good for you. Piano is just, is just an amazing skill, great to have. If you have any questions, then email me, marcy at singlemomonafarm.com. Keep up the good work raising your kids. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye. P.S. I'm gonna add a few home movies to this video not to show off or anything, but just to encourage you to see what is possible without spending any money on music lessons at all, but just having a piano, digital piano, keyboard, anything, maybe having some piano books or um, like Disney books, which you can get from the library. We get check out like a lot of our music from the library. Um, musicals, Disney, folk songs, whatever they're interested in, get the music, encourage them to learn how to read music and play it. And all this can be possible without spending any money on lessons, it's just to see what a wonderful feeling it is to have your kids being really proficient at the piano. And if you're not interested in watching them, then um, th have a good day. You can turn it off. And if you want to just hear a few videos, then I'm going to add them now. Thanks. Bye-bye.